Good morning, church family. It is so great to be with you for our online service for the parishes of I, Nubra and Thorny. How are you? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling with lockdown 2.0? Some of you may be feeling joyful today. It's a fresh start, a brand new day. So many things to be thankful for and to praise God for. But some of you may be feeling a bit weary, a bit tired, a bit down, a bit isolated and lonely. And so you might be questioning God. Well, I pray that today you're able to just take a moment out of your time to push those feelings, to not in a way to one side, but towards God, to push your fears, your worries, your joys to God and lay them at his feet and be like, God, this is how I feel. But today I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to focus on your word and I'm going to praise and glorify you through the midst of joys and through the midst of storms. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that you're here in our homes. We thank you that you care and that you love us. We thank you for this brand new day. God, help us to pause and to fix our eyes on you. And we lay our fears and our worries and our joys and our happiness at your feet right now. We pray that you'd speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please do join in with our time of song worship.
Daniel chapter 12, 1 to 3. The angel wearing linen clothes said at that time, the great angel Michael, who guards your people, will appear. Then there will be a time of troubles, the worst since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, all the people of your nation, whose names are written in God's book, will be saved. Many of those who have already died will live again. Some will enjoy internal life and some will suffer internal disgrace the the wise leaders will shine with all the brightness of the sky and those who have taught many people to do that what is right will shine like the stars forever the reading for today is from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 1 through 8. Jesus tells about the future. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of the disciples said, Teacher, look at these tremendous buildings. Look at the massive stones in the walls. Jesus replied, These magnificent buildings will be so completely demolished that not one stone will be left on top of the other. Later, Jesus sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives across the valley from the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, When will this all take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to show us when this will all be fulfilled? Jesus replied, Do not let anyone mislead you, because many will come in my name, claiming to be the Messiah. They will lead many astray, and wars will break out far and near, and do not panic. Yet these things must come. The end will not follow immediately. Nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other, and there will be earthquakes in many parts of the world, and famines. But all this will only be the beginning of the horrors to come. Good morning. I used to work in the West End of London many years ago and uh, I remember from those days that if you walked down Oxford Street any time of the day or night you would always see that man walking up and down carrying a a rigid banner above his head and uh, on the banner invariably in red words there would be the end is nigh and normally accompanied by a whole list of foods containing protein that you shouldn't eat because they would um, lead you into all kinds of trouble. And uh, something made me think of that when I read this passage early this week. Uh, This passage from Mark's Gospel, not easy to digest, but it's one of several occasions when Jesus talks about the future and the end days and so I think it's important to take to heart what he says here. Uh, The context here we're still in the last week of Jesus normal earthly life. Uh, After a day's teaching in the temple he's leaving the temple this day with his disciples and one of them remarks to him about uh, how great the temple is looking how magnificent the buildings and the huge stones. Now the temple was rebuilt by Herod over 50 years and in fact it's just having the finishing touches put to it and it's indeed looking really awesome. It's probably one of the the biggest and the most magnificent, well one of the most magnificent, greatest buildings really in the ancient world huge stones, uh, stones, some of the stones were over 40 feet long, um, that, that is some brick, um, and uh, they were adorned by 
gold, silver and precious furnishings inside and out. And it was it was huge, big covered a big area, and uh, the height of it would be about the about the equivalent of a six story building today. And in response to this comment about the the building, uh, Jesus says something which I'm sure no one was expecting at that moment. Something which uh, was misquoted subsequently and used against him when he was when he was on trial later that week. Um, Jesus says here, do you, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. Indeed, 40 years later, following Jewish revolts against the Roman rule, the Romans destroyed most of Jerusalem and in the process they absolutely levelled the great temple to rubble. And indeed, not one stone stood on top of the other. What they did was they lit huge fires at the base of the temple walls. And these caused the, 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 the bottom uh, stones to crack under the intense heat. And the stones on top of them just came crashing down. And the whole thing was reduced to, to rubble. Um, in response to Jesus' comments that day, the disciples were clearly alarmed and shocked and they took him aside when he was uh, resting on the Mount of Olives and uh, Jesus, when will this happen? How will we know? What are the signs? And it's what Jesus said that I think is, is worth noting for ourselves. To summarise Jesus warns them of those who follow them and could lead them astray. Um, false prophets, false leaders, maybe false philosophies. Jesus says, don't be led off course. Don't be led off course by, by false teachers who will come after me. And he goes on to say, don't be alarmed, you'll hear rumours of wars, and you'll see wars. A troubling time is coming, he's saying here, there'll be earthquake and famine. Jesus' words to them, don't be alarmed. A bit like that phrase that we, we use more and more these days that originated from the Second World War, keep calm and carry on. Jesus says such things must happen, but the end is still to come. These are the beginning of birth pains, he says. Well, I can't claim to know just how painful birth pains are at all. But I do know that they are somehow forgotten and totally swallowed up in the absolute joy that follows in the holding of a newborn baby. I can't really imagine how things will be at the end of time, but I trust God and I know that whatever happens, we are in his hands if we trust him. However rough things may get, the ultimate end will be full of God's justice and peace. That's for all time. So we have to trust in God and I think live a life of expectation and hope in Christ's return but not get caught up and worried about every twist and turn in the road. But what Jesus does make very clear is in every situation just as Christ has shown us his love that we show that love and compassion for our neighbour. Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these people, you do it for me. Just in closing, I want us to glance back at the 
temple in Jerusalem. Just for a moment, that great building, that symbol of greatness, where the majesty and the holy presence of God resided at that time. Within years of rebuilding, it was reduced to rubble. See, Jesus himself had many times called out the religious leaders of his day for their hypocrisy and their blind observance of the law, putting their faith in everything but God, the temple, the law. He called them out for their lack of love, their empty hearts. At one point he called them whitewashed tombs. Paul says in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Do you know you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If that's true for you, for me, we can't be thrown down. Like that old ancient temple, we can't be thrown down, the temple of God, if we're standing on the faith of the Lord. God bless you. Let's take a moment now to pray. Father, we come to you now in our time of need, in a time of fear, in a time of joy. God, if we were here a year ago, we wouldn't have known, we, we didn't realise what this year was going to be like. We had our first lockdown and we didn't even expect to have this second lockdown. God, some of us are feeling tired and weary and just want this to be over. God, we give you our struggles right now. And we say, God, take control. We know that you're bigger than all of this and we trust you. So God, take control, fill us with peace, we pray. And Father, we pray for our friends and family who may be on, on their own. God, may you fill them with peace and joy. May they not feel isolated and alone. God, keep our friends and family safe. We pray for our loved ones who are unwell. God, protect them, bring healing. And we pray for our children and young people. 
it's great that they can still be in school and have some normality to life. God, keep them safe while they're in school. Keep the teachers and teaching staff safe as well. And God, bring joy and laughter into those classrooms. May they have an enjoyable time together. May they not feel alone. And God, we pray for this government as they continue to navigate this, this crazy time of this pandemic and also navigate Brexit and then also deal with what's going on over in the States with the US election and, and um, that transition there. God, we pray for our government and we pray for the world. God, may you give them wisdom. May you be present within each country's government. May you speak to them, give them opportunities to rest, give them opportunities to slow down and focus on their families, but also give them wisdom as they um, make decisions for this country and for this world. God, sometimes we ourselves can uh, be rather judgmental of the government and be quick to judge them and quick to condemn them. God, help us to be loving and kind to them, even when they get things wrong. Help us to acknowledge that they're human too and that they need you as well. So God, help us to be loving and kind to not only the government, to, but to those of us around us. Help us to be kind to our neighbours. Help us to be kind to those um, on the tills in shops. Those that we speak to over the phone. Those that we engage with um, throughout the week. Help us to be loving. Help us to be your hands and feet. So God, be with us. Strengthen us, bring us peace and wisdom. And God, use us this week. May you shake up our lives this week. May you do something new in our lives. May we experience you in a new way. May you reveal yourself to us in a new way, we pray. And we praise you. We give you glory because you're worthy to be praised. We thank you for your love. And we ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.